Hi there, uh, Michael DiVanino from Flow Immersive, going to give an update on COVID-19. Uh, today is April 9th, and besides being my birthday, today is also a great day of hope. And I say that because in the data that we're going to go through together, there are some early indications that we are indeed flattening the curve, not only in the U.S., but abroad as well. This is great news, and, and while this is far from over, um, you know, also recognizing that the 1918 Spanish flu pandemic, that it wasn't the first wave of the virus that did the most damage. It was really the second and the third waves. And so we as a global society really need to work together in order to stop this out on a very localized basis. And so there's three things that I want to go through today. One, it is instilling and showing you that sense of, of where this is moving or how we're flattening the curve. Two, um, that we need to look at a very localized basis to see some of these hot spots. And three, that every state is on a different timeline in terms of when we should peak. So let's dive in. This first view that you're looking at is just a view of all of the number of cases throughout the world. And what this shows is one, the magnitude. Um, the magnitude in, in the US specifically, where it's this giant line compared to everywhere else. The, the purple line is the country, are all countries, red is all states, and yellow is all counties. Um, and so while this is interesting, I think it paints a picture that is not necessarily representative of, of um, the population density. And so if we take into account the population density, we're going to look at the cases on a per capita basis. And now the U.S. is much, um, much smaller in terms of the country, um, and Europe actually starts to light up in terms of the percentage of the population that's actually in fact infected um, in Europe. So in the U.S., we really want to look at more of this county level. And when we look at a county level, this is point number two that we can really start to see these hot spots. And some are not really being discussed. Um, you know, here in Georgia, Randolph County, Georgia, 1.28%. We've heard a lot of news in Louisiana or New Orleans Parish, 1.3%. Uh, Blaine County, Idaho, 1.86%. Idaho, uh, here in New York, uh, Rockland County, 1.97%. And so as we start to look through, these are the really the localized areas that we need to pay attention to because it's being able to act locally that we're going to make an impact on these numbers. Um, you know, the other thing I want to point out is really California and Washington, which had some of the earliest cases but enacted shelter-in-place rules very early on, took pretty strict measures, and have, have mostly kept this under control. Um, and so let's look at that trend. This is point number one, which is where are we moving? So this graph, what we're looking at is on the x-axis, it's the days since that country had 100 confirmed cases. On the y-axis, what we're looking at is the number of new cases over the last three days uh, per capita, so taking into account population. And we look at three days to filter through some of the noise that would happen on a daily basis. But what we can start to see is, like in Spain, Italy, France, that these numbers are starting to level out, if not start to decrease, which is a very positive sign that we are getting beyond that exponential part of the curve, and that we're not continuing on that exponential pattern, and same in the U.S. So we're starting to see that flattening of the curve, and ultimately we want to see these go all the way down, just like how things went in South Korea and China. So breaking the U.S. apart further, let's look at a select number of states and look at the same thing, where we're looking at the number of new cases over the last three days and where we're trending. And so if we see here in red, that's New York. That's where the epicenter has been, and we're starting to see that decline, which is a very positive sign. However, at the same time, we need to account that there's other states that are increasing still quite dramatically. New Jersey is uh, very, it, New Jersey, this green line, uh, is one of those where it's still increasing quite dramatically. We're also seeing that in Louisiana. However, you know, places like California and Washington have maintained relatively low numbers despite their large populations. So let's look at that same graph now, and we're going to extend out this x-axis to look over a larger time frame. And we're going to do that because we want to pull in this predictive model. And this predictive model is looking at the total number of hospital beds that are predicted to be needed for each of these states. So not only is there a different magnitude per state, but it's also a different timeline. So New York is, is peaking right now. Um, and 
right now is this yellow or this uh, pink line right here. That's today. Um, but if we look at New Jersey, New Jersey is expected to peak more on the 15th. And down here, Florida is much later on the 21st. So we're on different timelines. We have different needs. And one thing that they also predict with this model is the total number of deaths that we can, we can anticipate. And it came out that it was going to be between 100 and 200,000. That's actually since decreased, which is a, a great, great sign um, that it's going to be closer to 70,000. Um, in, in New York, it was anticipated to be around 15,000, 16,000 people um, die in total over this. Um, and this blue, these blue dots here are representative of the actual numbers. And we can see that it's following, following that, those predictive models relatively closely, um, if not just a little shy of them, which is a, a good sign. So, um, so yeah, that is um, a quick update on COVID-19. Thank you all and stay safe.